All right, how's it going everyone? So like I mentioned, I'm probably going to be making a little bit more view content just because I do like using view. It's very concise and it's fun to play with and I just need a break from using React. So I'm going to try to build out a view stopwatch using Vite. So I'm going to run npm create Vite latest view stopwatch. We'll say view, we'll use TypeScript and we will go ahead and cd into that directory that we just created. And then I'm going to reuse this VS Code window and open that up. And you're probably wondering why I have a Band-Aid on my face. I went to the dermatologist and just decided to have something kind of biopsied off of my face because it kept getting inflamed and going down and getting inflamed in the same spot. So just rule out there's nothing serious going on there. It's probably not. But All right, so first thing, we are in the project. I'm going to say npm install. Set up the dependencies for this view application. All right, now that that's set up, I'll do npm run dev and that should spin up our view app. Okay, so we're gonna keep this super simple. Again, I'm making this video as like a, getting your feet wet with Vue a little bit and also just like reinforce my knowledge about Vue. I have been using Vue on a little side project at work and I got a good chance to play around with the composition API and we built out uh, some decent functionality. So I think I'm kind of used to it by now. So for those who don't really know how to write Vue, basically you have components that have the extension of .view. I guess you can call these the view single file components. And inside a single file component is broken into three parts. You have your script. So this is where you put all your JavaScript or TypeScript. In our example, we're using TypeScript. You got a template section, which is where you put your actual like HTML. And then you have your styles. And if you put scoped here, that'll basically make all these styles scoped to only be applied to this template that you're looking at. The reason we want scope styles is because it makes your styling much easier to maintain if you know that the only thing that's applying styles is from the scope styles down below, right? So let's just go ahead and delete some stuff. So something else I really want to point out is that you'll see that there's a setup keyword here. This is a keyword that basically allows you to write a lot more concise script tags using the view composition API. If you don't put the setup, you actually have to say like export default and then like, I think you have to export like a function or a object. I don't really know. I've been using the setup script for all my experimentation. So it just makes it kind of really simple to use. Okay, so we're trying to make a counter, right? Like a, like a stopwatch. So if we were to make a stopwatch, the first thing that we need to probably do is display some time. So I'll just say like span and I'll just do something like this. We'll keep this as simple as possible and let's make sure this shows up. Cool. Um, second thing we want to do is let's add a button that says start. Okay, maybe we also want a pause and then maybe we also want a restart. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. I might want to put these on lines below, so I'll just go put this on a div and uh, yeah, this looks okay. Now the goal is when you click the start button, we want to kind of kick off a timer. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, let's just go ahead and make a function called start, pretty self-explanatory. And we need to basically attach a event listener to when someone were to click on this button. So how do you do that in view? Well, you can do an at symbol and you say click, but you can also do different like events, right? When when the DOM element emits events, you can listen to those by doing any of these, right? Click, key down, key press. Let's just stick with click, and we're going to let it equal to an empty string. Now in here, you can provide a callback function. You can provide an anonymous function. We are just going to put start. Okay, so when you click on this button, it's going to just start the timer. Pretty straightforward, right? So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to set a an interval maybe every second and we could just basically increment this thing okay so let's go ahead and just try that we'll say like const interval is equal to set interval we'll do this and we'll say every second we need to do something okay what do we need to do well first of all we probably need to increment some number so let's just go ahead and keep track of that now with view you want to keep track of state you can use something called a ref so I'll say const um, time elapsed is equal to ref, right? Now I do probably need to auto import this. Let's go ahead and import that there. 
So now we have this like variable that we can basically change the value of. And when you change the value of a reference, it's going to automatically update in the DOM where you are using it, right? So in our case, we could actually render this out. And the way you do interpolation in view is by using these double curly braces. So it's kind of similar to React. It just uses two instead of one. So let's go back to the UI and let's verify that everything renders out. Okay, let's go ahead and just load up the terminal, refresh the page, and we have a zero here. Okay, now again, just to exemplify what I was talking about, I can change this to like 138, and that's going to render out 138 right above the buttons. Same, same deal. It's just basically making some state. It's just a lot easier to um, do in view than it is React, in my opinion, because in view, everything is potentially mutable. You can mutate values, and that will kind of be reactive and update your DOM elements. Um, so what we want to do that we kind of started on was we want to kick off an interval and every second we need to do something. Well, what do we need to do? We have to increment this thing by one. So let's just say this value plus plus, right? So what we'll is basically every second we will increment this by one and we should see this kick off and start incrementing. Okay. So let's also do some other stuff. We need to basically pause the timer when you click pause. So let's go ahead and put a click listener here. The add click equals pause. And then I'll say function pause. Um, make sure you spell function correctly. And we're going to go ahead and just do something here. What do we need to do? Well, when you pause it, we're going to have to basically stop the interval. Now, I don't think there's a way to like pause or stop an interval in JavaScript. I think you just have to clear the interval. And then you'd have to basically like restart it again. So unfortunately, we don't have access to interval here, right? We need interval here, but we don't have access to it. So how do we actually set that up to maintain a reference to this interval thing? Well, we can use something called a ref. I just explained that. So I'll just go ahead and put interval up here. And I'll say this is a ref, which is going to default to undefined. Um, I guess in this case, it's any. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this undefined so it's like typed properly. Um, but what I'm going to do is instead of doing this, I will say interval dot value is equal to set interval. Now this actually needs to be a number. So what I could do is I could say number or undefined so that it's typed properly. This is how you can type references. So again, this is either undefined because we don't have an interval going or it's set to a number that we can use later on to clear the interval. So now we've kind of achieved this. We've, we know where the interval is because it's stored in state, it's stored in a reference. So now if you click pause, we can just say clear interval and we can say interval dot value. Okay. Let's verify this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And then I'll click pause. Pretty cool. And if actually, if I click start again, I do believe it'll just kick off that timer one more time, right? So pretty cool. Now I do think there's probably some issues when um, we are running the interval, we should probably hide this button, right? So how do you hide elements in view? It's actually pretty, pretty intuitive and straightforward. You just put V if on the component that you want, and you can put some type of uh, Boolean logic here. So I'm going to say if this is, uh, if interval is defined like this, then it should hide it. So let's just go ahead and refresh this. Um, I think I have it backwards. I'm going to say if it's not equal to undefined. Does that make sense? So if the interval is not equal to undefined. Wait, what am I doing? If the interval is undefined, excuse myself, it's kind of late. So if it's undefined, then we can show start. And what we should also do is probably hide pause if we haven't started yet. We also probably want to hide both of those pause and restart. Like, do we always want restart showing? I don't know. But let me show you something you could potentially do is I could wrap this in a div. And these two buttons, I'm going to go ahead and say V else right there. We got a V else. And this is basically the way you do it in view is your V else has to come directly after where you have a V if. And if this one is not true, it's going to basically act like a normal, you know, control flow that you learn in JavaScript, right? So this will show. So now when I click start, pause and restart will show. And if I click pause, it clears the interval. 
And unfortunately, we don't show the start again or the resume. So we should probably add a resume, right? So this is getting a little bit more tricky. Uh, so how do we do that? Unfortunately, we have the interval going, but we didn't clear it. Okay. So it might make sense at this point to like, let's actually keep track of like a state machine kind of thing. So I could just say const state um, is equal to a ref. And I will say stopped. And then we're going to basically type this to be either stopped. It could be running. Um, or it could be paused. Hopefully this is good enough. You know, again, I'm trying to like solve this live for you all. I'll close the file browser because it's just kind of in our way. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing this interval stuff, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to say if the state is equal to um, stopped, then I will go ahead and show that start. And then I'm actually going to get rid of the VLs. I know I just put it in and I just showed you what it was, but I decided I don't want that approach. I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to make this more atomic. So I can kind of handpick when these things show up. Okay, so for the pause, we want to say v if state is equal to, and what do we want to actually check that it's equal to? I'm gonna go ahead and say running. If this is running, we can show the pause button. Okay, same thing with restart. I'm gonna say if state is equal to running, um, or state is equal to paused. Let's try this out. That's kind of ugly to have all in one line, but I mean, we'll refactor a little bit. All right, so let's try this out again. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And that is not showing anything because we forgot to change the state, okay? So let's go ahead and when you start, I'll say state uh, value is equal to running. When you pause it, I'll say state.value is equal to paused. And I'm also going to say interval.value is equal to zero here because we want to make sure we kind of empty that out. In fact, I'll say undefined, probably good enough. Now let's try it again. Start, now we get pause and restart. If I click pause, that should basically hide all the buttons except for restart. But we probably want to put a resume, right? So let's add another button here. Just go ahead and paste this, I'll say resume. And we will go ahead and call a method called resume that we haven't created yet. But we only want to show this if we are paused. Okay, so let's go here. I'll say function resume. And now that I think about it, like we don't have to even call resume here. Let's just call start again. I think calling start is good enough. Um, and again, we could probably simplify this logic a little bit. There's probably something that I'm overcomplicating, but it's, it's fine, whatever. Let's click resume and now it's counting up again. I'll click pause and it's pause. Now restart is something we haven't added. Let's just go ahead and add that. So if you click on restart, let's call a method that we haven't created yet called restart. And I'll go here, I'll say function restart. And what does this function need to do? Well, first of all, it has to basically clear the interval. Um, so let's just go ahead and call this stuff. But we want to change it to state value is equal to starting, or um, call it running. And actually, let's just let's just do this. If you restart, you'll say time elapsed dot value is equal to zero. Um, or we can make it undefined, I guess. Let's see. No, let's make it zero because that's what it's typed as. It's a number, so you have to put it as something. And then what we could do is we just basically need to clear an interval if the interval's running at all. It might make more sense to say like if interval interval dot value is not equal to undefined, then we could probably just like clear it here. And then finally, let's just call start. Okay, so we're basically gonna restart everything. And uh, that should restart the value to zero. It should clear any intervals that are existing. And then I'll just restart this whole thing again. Let's try it. Do start. And if this is running, I'll click restart. Uh, it looks like it works fine. It just clears the interval, restarts the count, and then it restarts the interval. Now I could pause it. And let's make sure if I click restart, it goes back to zero and it starts counting up. Cool. So that is the basic 
thing, the basic little count up timer I wanted to build. I mean, you can take this a step further and like format this thing properly so it has like, uh, I don't know, like format this so it has minutes in seconds. Should we do that? Would that be fun to do? Like maybe we can. I'll say function format time. That takes in a uh, elapsed time like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call it like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, say minutes is equal to elapsed time mod 60. That should give us the minutes, right? Am I, am I thinking about this correctly? No. Divided by 60 should give us the minutes. And then I'm going to say math.floor, hopefully. And then the seconds would be um, elapsed time mod 60. And then we can just go ahead and return, let's see, minutes colon seconds and I do think that we might need to like left pad by something is that even possible first of all let's just see what happens here let's just count up a little bit and uh yeah it doesn't look that great I really need to like left pad it with zeros I'm trying to think of the best way to do that so I think one hack that you could potentially do is Put some zeros here. In fact, I'm going to convert this to a string first of all. I'll say plus string, plus string. Might be a little hacky. It might be more proper just to like uh, do something else. But hey, that works. So this should be a string and it will be either like nine, a single digit, or it'd be like 15, a double digit. And really, what I think we could do is actually, I'm going to go ahead and just put a bunch of zeros here. I don't think we need four precisely. But well, let's just append a bunch of zeros to this um, this number. And now that I think about it, let's not append, let's not do the plus symbol because that can really cause some issues in JavaScript. I'm gonna do proper string interpolation here, uh, which I'm completely messing up. Let's do that. Interpolate this. There we go. We'll do the same thing with this. I'll put some zeros in front of here. And we'll do this. Technically, I think we just need to append it with one zero. Are you guys confused yet? Because I am definitely confusing myself. And what we need to do is probably change this to uh, make sure this is a number so that it's typed properly. And then we're going to go ahead and just after we kind of pad this number here, I think we can say like, is it slice or substring negative two? Let's, let's see if this works. I don't remember what the proper way is, but let's see what happens here. Okay, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because I wanna verify my logic actually works. Let's just do this. That should be super speed now. And then when it hits 60, it should reset back to zero, zero, and then the minute should go up. Awesome. So there you have it. That is uh, how you can build a timer using view with the composition API. And again, uh, I, I usually do a bunch of React tutorials on my video, but I do plan to sprinkle in a little bit of Vue stuff in my channel because I do think Vue is just, it's kind of a, a breath of fresh air coming from React. It's more concise. It's easy to just type stuff up. There's not a bunch of like state call, setter callback stuff you have to worry about. Don't have to worry about effects. Just It's just nice. I like it. So any video that you see with the green camera, just know that it's going to be a Vue video. It's going to be a video about Vue. So if you don't care about Vue at all, just if you see the green light, just don't watch it, okay? Otherwise, I'll use the blue light for my React and my normal stuff. But uh, if you guys like watching this little um, tutorial, like walkthrough, overview to Vue, let me know. Leave a comment. Press the bell icon. Subscribe. Um, and like always, I have a Discord channel that you're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out and ask questions to some other developers if you're stuck and just need, um, you know, a community to help you get unstuck along the way. Cool. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and uh, happy coding.